thanks for checking out this no spoilers movie review and this one is for assassination nation a film that actually came out in 2018 so just last year super super new i uh, got it out through my netflix dvd service yes i keep saying this yes i'm still using netflix dvd service because they have a huge selection that you cannot necessarily get on streaming services so this film i'm going to say this up front at the end, I typically do my star rating, and it's out of five, and it's halves in play. This is a five star for me. This film is amazing. If you have not seen this film, go see this film. And it makes me feel bad that I didn't see it in the theater because I know some people are out there saying, hey, this film's really good. People need to go out and support it. It did not do well in theaters. And I think part of the reason for that was that people kind of didn't know what it was. Um, I'm not sure that... I'm not sure I even saw a trailer for it prior. I had heard about it coming out, and with the title like Assassination Nation, it's kind of hard to know what the film's going to be. And I will say that, having just watched it, and obviously doing this review, it, it's a film that, it's a lot of genres kind of rolled into one. Yes, it would constitute as horror, but it would also constitute as drama. It would also constitute as, like, thriller. It would. It, it's a revenge film. It's got a lot of gore in it. It's got a lot of social topics in it. It's very smart film. And that's one of the other things about this is I know probably a lot of people may not like this film just because it's very smart. It has a lot to say and it's a very progressive film. So that's the other thing is um, I know a lot of people when they see a film that's trying to tell them something, trying to kind of give you... Um, What's the best way to put it? Kind of give you some lessons in a sense. A lot of people don't like that type of thing. This film is chock full of those types of lessons. It's actually kind of a look at our society and the hate culture, basically, that has developed. And that's hate in a lot of realms. It, 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 excuse me, it touches so much. So for that reason, on my phone, I actually have a lot of notes on it, and they may be kind of like a little bit out of order because I just kind of do the notes as I'm watching the film. So I'm going to talk about as much as I can, but I'm also going to say like this, I can't cover everything. I just can't because this film is so chock full of stuff that it just, I would need to watch it a few times, I think, in order to get everything going on in it because there's so much. The script is so tight. The film is tightly edited, it's extremely well directed, the acting is really good, the writing is amazing, uh, the music choices are really good and really go, the cinematography is beautiful, everything looks phenomenal, sounds phenomenal, is phenomenal with this film, which is why I'm giving it a 5 star rating, which I don't think I've done a 5 star rating for any of my reviews yet, but this film is, you gotta see it, I mean you really do. The other thing about why, uh, why I think this is maybe not all that popular up front, and I do think this is a film that's going to become a cult classic. Uh, for me, it's it's a cult classic right now because it didn't do all that well, and I loved it. This was uh, phenomenal. I'm going to tell a lot of people about this film. Um, obviously, here we go. This is a, a movie review. Please take this. send the, uh, Watch this and send it to other people and say, hey, check out uh, this guy's no-spoiler review on this film. Uh, I am going to be able to dive pretty deep on this with a lot of themes and everything and not really actually spoil the film, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, but one of the things is this is an uncomfortable film for a lot of reasons. Uh, it's uncomfortable because it makes you think about things that are ingrained in your own society. It's uncomfortable because it makes you think about things that are ingrained as you, in you as a human being and kind of makes you reflect on that stuff. It's uncomfortable because it has overt sexual topics, and, and it has a lot of things that a lot of people may just find uncomfortable in general, um, depending on who you are. Because there's, uh, I mean, it, it's it's interesting because the way the film opens up, they have the, this kind of crazy screen that says, like, trigger warnings, and then they go through, like, this quick series of words that flash on the screen that tell you all the potential triggers like gore, violence, um, homophobia, toxic mass, uh, male ego, um, I'm trying to think of everything. There's just so much, there's so much homophobia. Uh, th there's so much, uh, bullying. That's another big one in this. Like it just like runs through everything, which I think is an interesting kind of take because I feel like nowadays there are so many like moments where people have to say okay this is a, you know here's your trigger warning this is a trigger um 
So for them to kind of like flash it up front, it's interesting because it lets you know what you're getting into. And it also kind of guides you into this is what we're trying to get through to you at the same time through through this film. So um, I'm not going to be able to hit every single one of those topics because it's just so much. Uh, and this would just end up being like an hour long. And like I said, you know, I I would have to watch it a few more times. I like doing those reviews like initial reaction after it. So, all right. So like I said, it's about hate culture. It's about hate culture in general. Uh, rolls into specifically because it's very online based and social media based is the focus of the catalyst of the actual problem in this film. Um, but that's obviously, you know, what is behind, uh, technology and what is behind social media. It's human beings and it's what society says and what society makes you think and make you do and all these types of things. So it's about social media, but it's also, it's mainly about society and how people drive all that, um, and the terrible stuff that comes with it. And the fact that, you know, maybe we should critically think a little bit more about things we think and, and how we react to things and stuff like that. But I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we go through. But yes, it's about this hate culture, but it also has components of what's developed over the past decade or so of the online troll culture, which is kind of this culture of just wanting to do bad things and say terrible things um, just because people think it's fun. Like they, they think it's fun to be a jerk. They think it's fun to be an awful person. And a lot of times you end up finding that there are people who, if you're talking to them in real life, they're actually really nice. They're really cool people. And then they get online and it's like this alter ego where they're like a total jerk, like a total ass. And they go around and all they want to do is make people mad by posting these inflammatory comments. And you ask them, you know, if you have the ability to ask them, like, why are you doing this stuff? And they're like, oh, you know, I just think it's fun. How is that fun? Like, I don't even understand. And I know some people like this, to be honest. I'm not really friends with them. They're kind of acquaintances in a sense. And that it just boggles my mind how people can be like that. Like, you're one person. It's so two-faced. You're one person in person, and you're another person behind your computer screen, which obviously it has to do with the fact that when you're, like, in the flesh interacting with someone, you have to answer for your for what you say and what you do. When you're behind a computer screen, there's a veil right there, and you can hide behind that. People don't necessarily know who you are, so you can get the satisfaction out of antagonizing someone or putting someone down or pissing someone off, and nobody actually knows who you are. They can't attribute it to your actual personality. So you really have, like... I mean, and everyone, to a degree, has an online personality and an in-person personality. So this kind of, um, this film actually takes that and kind of says, like, what happens if that's all meshed together? And everything you do online and via technology is exposed. And then, basically, those two versions of you come together. Like, what does that turn into? What does that end up being? So, um... Sorry, I'm going to read through my notes. I may have covered some of this already because I just go. Uh, like I said, a lot of this in this film potentially could um, could offend some people or make you uncomfortable. I think that's the biggest thing. Not necessarily like offend, but make you uncomfortable. And I think that's actually a good thing in this film because of the points it's trying to make. You should be uncomfortable because it is uncomfortable. And these things in real life are uncomfortable. I'm just saying. Uh, but it presents it in such an awesome way. L like I said, like the film is beautifully shot, really well acted, extremely well written. Shout out to Sam Levinson, by the way, the guy who wrote and directed this. I will look forward to everything this guy is doing in the future. Very, very nice work. Um, so one of the one of the things early on that may turn some uh, older crowds off is the way it's shot. It's very like frantic and kind of fast paced some quick shots, the way the music is. It seems a little music video-esque. It just has more of a younger audience feel to it. It's more, it's way more youthful than um, a lot of people my age and around my age and older when they approach horror are looking for. You know, it, it, it's a lot faster. It just seems more young. It's more like a more like a film that I'd see, I'd hear some some people who annoy me saying, um, oh, those millennials, it's for those millennials. Like, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, just letting you know that. Uh, it makes a good point about people's desire to have those in their lives as they want them and not actually accept them the way they are. And this 
becomes clear it's very much a societal thing where people are kind of given these ideas through social media and through movies and shows and stuff like that that there's a certain way you want your friends to be, you want your family to be, you want your, uh, you know, romantic partners to be. Uh, and it's led to this issue, and this film definitely points it out, where there's this pressure for people to act the way people in your life want you to be and not who you are. So it's more like on you to change and become what they want and less on them to actually accept who you are as a person, you know, like why should you have to edit yourself? Why should you have to change who you actually are? And that's kind of the point, one of the many points that this film is making, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then it also kind of makes a point about you're becoming something for social consumption is what I wrote down. I mean, it's truly what it is. So it's kind of like what I was talking about before of like having these two yous. It's you out in public and it's you behind a screen and social media, especially with all these people who do, um, you know, these trying to get the perfect photo or trying to be the perfect person online, trying to do this or do that or look a certain way. Um, so people put a lot of time into that and that's, that's making yourself most consumable, like creating yourself for social consumption and not necessarily being who you are, like having the flaws, you know, like, I, I mean, I'll give you a prime example right now. It's kind of weird, but you know, like I'm balding. I'm sure a lot of people can tell that because of the way that this, that, you know, the camera shoots, like you can see it looking up this way for sure. But you know, I, the way I get my hair cut, there's a way that it's kind of covered a little bit, you know, like why shouldn't I feel like I can just kind of let everything go and it is how it is, which, you know, I don't put a lot of time in like doing my hair or anything. So a lot of times you see this, like what I could do in this video is I could wear a hat. I could do something to kind of cover it up. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, it's me, you know, like, so I, I deal with it a little bit because it obviously is something I am uncomfortable with, but I don't, um, I don't go to the extreme of like what's being pointed out in this film of, you know, finding that perfect picture and setting yourself exactly, posing exactly right so you look the best you possibly can. I'm not doing these videos to look the best I can. I'm hoping that the content speaks for itself and people just looking at me aren't too turned off by the fact that I look the way I do and instead listening to what I'm saying and appreciating it. So just another point there. Um, this shows how invested people are in inserting their judgment into what others do with their own bodies. Uh, yeah, this is another big thing that's kind of pointing out, and this kind of feeds into the hate culture, the trolling, all that type of stuff, where we we have a society, we have a culture that, that has become, especially since the internet, like that, I feel like that's accelerated this a lot, where people immediately will judge. You know, you, you see something about a person that isn't, it's not you. You can't relate to it. That's not the way you are. It's very different to you. It's new to you, whatever. And some people are in this mode now of seeing that and immediately reacting to it without knowing that person, without having context sometimes, and just saying, oh, I don't like that, or that's stupid, or that's disgusting, or that's terrible. You know, just being judgmental as a default when ideally, if we really think about it, we should be stepping back and in those moments just saying, you know, that's not familiar to me, that's weird to me, but that's that's not me. Like, that's that person, and that's their life, and I don't have anything to do with me, just whatever. If you see something you don't really like, something that makes you mad, unless it has very negative impact on someone else, like someone's being hurt or being bullied or something like that, you should just, whatever, you know, brush it off, because it's not you. But we've gotten into this mode, and this film points that out, of just being like, I, rea I have the right to react very viscerally to everything without putting much thought into it and extremely judgmentally. And that's nuts. Um, at one point in this film, they break the fourth wall and they don't really do it again so much. It's, it's this moment where one of the characters is like, oh, I love this song. And then everyone's like, what song? And, and then she like looks at the camera and is like, this song and snaps her fingers and then the music starts and it's like an intro for these characters going somewhere and I was like it did it didn't work for me and it mainly didn't work because it's not that type of film it's not the film 
that's consistently breaking the fourth wall like that, having the actors interact with the crowd in a sense. It's that one moment, and it just felt weird. And that's my one small criticism. I would take that out for sure. I think it was just too odd. Um, but the music that plays works. Like I said, the music in this works extremely well. Um, this film takes on the fear of everyone knowing your secrets and being openly judged, something I already talked about. But, uh, yeah, one of the biggest things with this is the, the fear that the secrets that you have that are hi hidden, you think, through technology are somehow made available to everyone, and then what does that do to you? The judgment that everyone starts to put on you, everyone knows everything about you because you are two people at this point, like I was talking about. You're a person in real life, and you're a person in online and through technology. And then when people know the both, both the, the you... That sounds weird. When people know both versions of you, I should say, how do they react to it? Especially with such a judgmental mindset, like I'm saying society is, because it is. Uh, there's an idea of the older generation wanting to keep secrets and the younger generation kind of wanting to be more open and be free. And that comes through in this film, I mean, between the generations. You know, it's, it's teenage teenagers which i don't know if they're actually teenagers but like are supposed to be teenagers um i mean they look like they could be I, but then again as i age I, i'm a very terrible judge of age i used to be good at it but as i continue to get older i cannot judge age i have no clue so um so yeah it's kind of this this um this extreme difference that's set up between the older generation and the younger generation where the older ge generation's like you know, you really need to filter this, or you really need to not do this in this situation and not do that in that situation. Whereas the younger generation's like, well, I'm just trying to be me. Like, why should I hide this? And you're thinking about this in a totally different context, or you're thinking about this in a context that is archaic. It's old. It's kind of saying, oh, well, this is what it is because that's what society's told me for so long. Like, one of the main things they focus on in this is kind of sexuality and nudity as as it relates to sexuality. There's kind of a point made in it of um, people look at a, a nude picture and they immediately think it's sexual, when it may not very, it, it may very well not be sexual at all, like the intent of it was never sexual, it's just a nude body. And so it's that kind of um, point that they're trying to make is that these things are not mutually exclusive. Every time you see nudity, it isn't sexual. Maybe to you, you, you may want it to be sexual, but that doesn't mean it is sexual, or at least the intent of it. When that person was taking that picture or making that video or whatever, it may very well not have been intended to be sexual. And that's the point that's made here. And that's the point that's made between the young and the old, because that's a common occurrence where the older generations look at nudity and sex and stuff like that and see it as extremely taboo. Now, as generations pass, as we get new, more new and new generations, things start to loosen up more, especially with things like social media, where you are kind of encouraged to share things, to be a little bit more of yourself, but it's also very judgmental at the same time. So it's kind of this catch-22 there. But um, that was extremely interesting of these opposing younger versus older and their idea sets and being so different. And it's true. I think it's true to life. I really do. Um, the troll culture and American tendency, uh, tendency to see something online and take action, get angry without knowing the truth or having context. So I already talked about this a little bit, but this also kind of crosses into even like seeing articles or seeing headlines, which is way more common that people don't read the articles. They only see headlines, which a lot of times headlines are misleading. I can tell you for a fact, I used to work in um, journalism. I used to work for a newspaper way mm, over 10 years ago. And um, yeah, I can tell you there are misleading headlines. So, th But there are a lot of people who online, when they see an article, they'll just read the headline and move on and make an assumption about it. Well, you're not getting the context. You have no clue what the actual story is there. You have no clue... Um, what it really even means and you have no clue if what you read is accurate or matches up with the uh the text of the body of the article so um this kind of crosses over to human to humans as well like when you see a picture of someone online or when you see them post something online 
you have a visceral immediate reaction to it and it's a judgmental one typically and you don't know that person a lot of the times unless they're very good friends of yours in which case you do but a lot of times you don't know who that person is you have no context of what were they thinking when they did this what was their intention necessarily which is which also speaks to why texting is so bad as opposed to being on the phone with someone because there's no inflection that people can get so there are often times in my life and in, and in other people's lives um, where text just texting it leads to an issue because people read into it something that's not intended. And it's one of those issues of seeing something and not knowing the context of it. So this specifically, I was talking about articles, but, you know, it crosses into many things, like I'm saying here. But, yeah, that's another thing they hit on. Is this sounding, like, dense? This film is dense. There's so much. And these types of films very enjoyable for me i love when i have to just like dig in and like pull things out of these films and and just like there's thing after thing after thing to recognize it's great um it touches on openness and sexuality yeah that's what i was, I was already kind of talking about that about the young generation versus old generation with nudity and sex and stuff like that and actually you know the younger generations become more free with talking about sex with sexual depictions things like that and then this also kind of touched on tied to that the whole thing of like slut shaming where it's kind of this issue where um, if you are openly sexual or you are sexually active um, and talk about it, then people are like, oh, you're a slut instead of just being like, that's your choice. And this goes back once again to being extremely judgmental, not knowing that person's life, not knowing the context of what's going on. Um, and like I was saying before, one of those things where if someone's talking about that, you just be like, okay. You know, that's not me. That's your life. Whatever. How does that impact you? It doesn't. Why should you care? You shouldn't. And that's the point. Just let it go. Whatever. Uh, and then the final thing I had, I know this, people are feeling like this is going to be like a half an hour or so. I swear it's not going to be. Um, the final thing I wrote, this is, there's this one scene in this film. There are many really good looking scenes in this, but there's one scene in particular where I really perked up and was like, the camera work on this is ridiculous. It is amazing. So there's a scene where they're um, shooting it from outside of a house through multiple windows and they just keep panning and like following what's going on in the house on two different levels and outside of the house as well. And it looks phenomenal that is amazing camera work it's very creative it's very interesting it grabs your it grabs your attention in that in that moment as well it's just it's amazing and the fact to like get the flow of that and keep the scene coherent and interesting with all the different things going on not easy to pull off and it just oh, it's amazing it looks so good so anyway like i said i already told you five star on this you must 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 see it uh, not just if you're a horror fan, but if you're a fan of film. If you're a fan of film, you must see this. And like I said, you know, it may be uncomfortable for you, but push through it. It is 100% worth it. Um, I loved it. I want to watch this again. I really do. <laughs> it's so good. It is so good. It makes you think so much. It is smart. It is in your face. And And for the horror fans out there, I know there are a lot of horror fans who are like, I just, I like good kills. I like good gore. There is good gore. There is, and at one point, this basically turns into a siege film. So if you're a fan of siege films, which usually have a lot of gore and violence and kills, it's in there for you. Like I said, it's a lot of things meshed into one, and it's phenomenal. But Sam Levinson, man, you did it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I feel honored, in a sense, to be able to uh, consume this film that you've put out there. Very well done, sir, and uh, everyone involved with this. Like I said, the acting was so good. The music was so good. Cinematography is so good. Editing so good. It's all so good. It's all so good. Anyway, I, I'm not going to continue to go on with my love affair with this film. Uh, thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Please help me out. Hit that subscribe right there. Uh, can help me out big time with this uh, channel long term, trying to grow. Word of mouth, too. That's another big thing. Please tell people about this channel if you like it um go ahead and comment down there have you seen assassination nation uh do you want to if you haven't and you've seen this now you should have you should want to i just almost said you should have to yes we should mandate everyone see this no you should want to uh and give me a thumbs up if you're interested in, in stuff like that anyway thank you so much for checking this out and until next time keep it brutal